Oh, what happened? What is going on with this? Why is it doing two? It's doing two different streams at the same time. Oh, yeah. Well, that's funny. That works for me. It's working! Why is the camera so low? Oh no! <laughs> internet! What's going on, Internet? How you doing? Sorry. Uh, was, this chair is awesome possum. There we go. Let's come in real close. Let's go farther away. Let's come in real close. Let's go farther away. And let's go in real close. Oh, yeah, real far away. Alright, we'll stay far away. How about that? It's a little intense when I'm, like, super close to the camera, right? I can see you, internet. Uh, what's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. Been running around going wild. It's a busy Wednesday, you guys. But, needless to say, it's time for the show. So, we're going to do the show. So, that's now. And the show is now. Right? So, that's what's going on. Yeah, and that's it. I guess that's the end of the show. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm back. How'd the show go, you guys? Did the show go well? Was it good? I think it went okay. It was only one minute long, and I made a lot of noises, fell off my chair. And that's pretty much it. Yay! No. Uh, it's Wednesday. I've been running amok. been going wild. Little check in with the weather. Super hot outside. So, hold on. I gotta reorganize the. I gotta reorganize the. Uh, sorry, I had to reorganize the air conditioner because it is super hot out and it's super humid. So, those of you out there that always say that the West Coast is just hot and it's not humid, it's a dry heat. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I. I I don't honestly I don't see a big huge difference um there's a difference between um 93 and 103 or an 11 11 three what is that 113 <laughs> 111 three yes right is that the number yeah I'll be honest with you guys it's all super hot I get it it's never really a competition, but it is warm out. It's hot out. It's not the worst thing you've ever seen, but uh, it's unusually staying hot out uh, in Western Washington. It's just continues to be hot. I guess they're they're calling it a a uh, a heat wave. It is a heat wave. Uh, River Life is saying, Joel, is it true? Are you going to leak something? Uh, am I going to leak what? I don't know. Am I going to leak something? Did I leak something? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to leak anything. Chocolate is delicious. <laughs> um, I don't know. Mr. Riverlife, you'll have to elaborate on what you're talking about. But it's good to see you. Uh, it's been quite a while. Haven't seen River Life since the Aquatic Experience last year, which I will be at the Aquatic Experience again. This will be two years in a row, Aquatic Experience style, which 
I can't, uh, I can't tell you guys how excited I am to be able to say hi and see all your bright and shiny faces. Uh, I've been going to a lot of the trade conventions and trying to get stuff back to you uh, guys. And uh, I have brought some material back. I'm still editing some of it, mainly because I, I don't feel the... Um, I don't feel like the... I, I honestly don't feel like the videos like really are telling all that much. So realistically I'm still just kind of working on those I keep kind of plunking away on them and uh, kind of figuring out what it is but um, you know I do have some of the stuff from the conventions and things like that but um, I would uh, you know I, I'm, I'm still working on those specific videos uh, there's a lot going on around here uh, before well, actually, let me say hi to who was first in the chat. Mr. Tampa Tom, first of the chat, quickly followed by James Neesham and James Lizer. So we got all the Jameses. We're going to let's see how many Jameses we can get in here today. We need all the Jameses. So, yeah, don't forget to share it out. Uh, there was some early chat going on about the uh, reminders, the notification button and stuff, uh, how unreliable that is. I don't know what to tell you guys. I, you know, I have 800 videos up on here that rarely get views. So I think it probably goes against what YouTube wants people to do. <laughs> uh, so I would imagine you might have to end up being like Tampa Tom and set a reminder. Uh, I don't know. I honestly, I constantly use the reminder alarms on my phone to remember things. Maybe that's the best way to do it. I don't know. But as far as I know, hit the subscribe and the notification bell and turn it on to always, I guess. But I don't know how well that works, to be honest with you. It just really uh, just it kind of is what it is. But Barbara Jackson's here. AJ Aquariums was here, but then had to leave. He's going to catch up on it later. He was just stopping in to hit the like button, which muchas gracias, mi amigo. That is so nice, my friend. Uh, hit the to stop in, hit that like button and then. You know, come back later. Watch it again when you got time. When you got time to chill, maybe you're gonna maybe you're gonna chill on your patio and lament me yelling into the microphone about a bunch of fish tankery for <laughs> two hours. <laughs> as goofy as that sounds, that's what we do here. We have a video segment. We answer questions, uh, whether they be from the Patreon and whatnot, which we normally do on Friday. People will ask, "What is a Patreon?" Patreon is a third party crowdfunding site where we kind of crowd crowdfund being able to make this show uh go out and travel and get video and stuff like that for you guys bring it back do the the you know do some of the instructional videos that i do along with uh you know uh fish tank tour you know fish room tours uh, store tours all that kind of stuff that we do here um i try to bring you guys as much content as i can and that is mainly uh, due to the people on the Patreon, I, I cannot mince words. I cannot tell you guys how much you outshine YouTube, the algorithm, all that stuff on a regular basis. Like every single month you guys crush it. My gratitude is, uh, I'm eternally grateful. I'm eternally grateful to you guys, uh, showing up on Patreon and doing that. Uh, it is, it is huge. It's, it's like $1 a month, $5 a month, whatever you guys can do. Uh, and a big shout out to Aqua Pros, our brand new patronizer today. If you guys don't know Mike, the Aqua Pros himself, he has come on board to patronize this show. And, uh, big thanks to the Aqua Pros for chipping in on the, uh, on the Patreon. Definitely appreciate it my guy i always always appreciate i always appreciate the aqua pros um if you guys missed his video today he is moving and uh, he'll actually be moving closer and closer to where i live which is going to be good because i i'm really trying to convince the guy to come up and uh do some more projects and that kind of stuff i, think I gotta move the camera i think i I think I had adjusted the camera for something I was doing and, and it's in a weird spot now. That's more comfortable, I think. Uh, we got Dan Squires throwing the Patreon link into the chat. If you're confused as to what the Patreon is, you can look into the live chat, click on that link, and go check it out. 
All right. Uh, let me say hi to a couple more people. I see Candy Overhauls in the chat, uh, along with Dan Squires, Steve Shrimp Shrimpery, and more, and uh, Joel Gillett. Those are our current moderators in the chat, along with Nisi of the North. Uh, if you guys see the blue names with the wrenches next to them, those are our moderators. And uh, give, feel free to give them a shout-out at any point in time. Uh, you can at whatever their name is and, and be like, I'm not sure what's going on, what's happening or whatever. Uh, they can answer some specific questions, but I have noticed that a lot of people have mentioned into the chat so far. People are asking about Real Fish Talk. Um, if you guys don't know what Real Fish Talk is, it is a, uh, it's a weekly show that Corey and myself from the Aquarium Co-op do where we kind of ramble on and, um, you know, talk about fish tanks and stuff it's a, it's a lot like this format but just with a better cast of characters because you throw in my homie Corey and uh, Jimmy in the background I think it's overall just a better version of uh of of what the deal is of what the dealio is right um it uh that's what it is it has been on hiatus uh while Corey is in Peru and uh it you know, some people out there know that Corey was back yesterday. We just couldn't do the real fish talk yesterday. He just was not feeling it. Uh, jet lag, all that kind of stuff, the travel, all the things going on. Just ain't throwing that onto that guy's plate and then be like, yeah, just come on here and talk for a couple hours when you're super tired and you can't figure out what's going on. Um, so, and uh, that's that's where real fish talk was this week. It's not here. And it might be back next week. I'm not 100% sure. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it shakes out. Ah. But uh, but I appreciate all you guys uh, checking it out. Uh, Philip says he burnt through all the RFT episodes on the iPhone podcast at work. Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I know how that is. I do that too. I definitely listen to a lot of podcasts myself from uh, Joe Rogan to... Um, let's see, I listened to Bill Burr, The Fighter and the Kid, uh, what else do I listen to? Um, I listened to Neil Tyson DeGrasse, I listened to his, the Star Talk Radio, I listened to that, let's see, let's double check here, let's look through. Um, I listened to Burt Kreischer, I listened to, believe it or not, Anna Ferris, uh, Drew Pinsky, uh, Tim Ferris, Mark Marin. I listen to a lot of comedians. I, I enjoy the comedy podcast. That's kind of the thing. And I'm actually scrolling through this. Uh, I, you know, I listen to Bill Maher, uh, H3H3, Jim Norton, uh, Ari Shafir. Let's see. This American Life. I definitely like This American Life. Radio Lab. Uh, comedy Film Nerds. I like that one. I like the Well Read podcast also. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely can appreciate um, be, listening to podcasts and having a lot of podcasts to listen to. Uh, I, I even run out, you know, because, you know, all the time that I spend out working in the field, all that kind of stuff, I definitely run out of stuff to listen to. Uh, I wish there was more Star Talk. I wish there was more Star Talk. I, I wish Neil. T uh, uh, Neil deGrasse. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil. Yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson wasn't so busy. Uh, doing a bunch of other science stuff and just made eight hours of <laughs> stuff for me every day to listen to. Uh, but we take it where we can get it, you know what I mean? And, like, he's pretty busy uh, doing his science and, and nonsense and um, uh, definitely love it. Ryan Brown says you need to listen to Joey Diaz. Um, I like Joey Diaz with other people, but I, I, don't, I don't appreciate him, uh, his podcast by himself for whatever reason. I, I don't know. I like... I like Joey Diaz. I think he's funny, but I, I just don't like. I guess maybe the thing is, is that like they're pretty much just doing drugs all the time during the podcast, so it's just kind of a chaotic. I, I don't know. I, I just don't. I just don't necessarily appreciate it. Um, like I said, like This American Life. If they made more of those, I would definitely listen to a lot of that. I listen to a lot of NPR and and, and those things too. Um, you know, obviously, obviously, you guys know that I talk about politics every once in a while, and people get super mad because they're like, um, you know, you can't be talking about that. 
<laughs> uh, but uh, I definitely listen to a lot of stuff like that. But I, I definitely do spend a lot of my time listening to comedy and things. I, I would much rather just enjoy laughing and, and having a good time than... Uh, but I do listen to a lot of NPR and things along those lines, right? Uh, Fancy Tail Aquatics is here asking, are you going to the Live Bearer Convention in Louisville next year as I will be there? Uh, LR said he would be there too. That's uh, that's LR Bratz, our homie from the woods. Distant relative to Sasquatch. <laughs> uh, Mr. Lucas Bratz himself. Uh, he's going to be there as far as I know. We are booked for the American Library Convention. I was actually at the American Library Bears Convention this year, which was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I do plan on going again. Louisville is uh, is pretty close to my heart because that's where my sister lives. So we were actually in Louisville this uh, not this summer, but last summer we were there, uh, and I hope to make a visit out there at some point in time. But my schedule is just getting full you guys so um i can't really tell you exactly a couple of things i can tell you a couple of the things that are coming up um this weekend i'm actually going out to just visit my mom which isn't going to be a big deal for you guys uh but the following weekend i will be in idaho uh so i hope to check out a couple of things in uh i'll be in the boise area so hopefully uh, I'll be able to maybe check out some fish stores, maybe a fish room or something that is in uh, in the Boise area. That's August 4th and 5th. Um, then uh, I'm headed to Alaska. Da, da, da. Can't tell you about any of that stuff until it's confirmed. September 4th? The Minnesota Fish Convention uh, in Minnesota, which... I'm super excited for it because I'm hopefully I get to go see Kang Lee's place. If you don't know who Kang Lee is, you should know who Kang Lee is. Um, Twin Cities Guppies. Uh, I I can't wait to go out there and check out his spot. Um, like the anticipation, I would put um, I would put on par with going to Backyard Aquatics, which. I can't wait to drop the backyard aquatics video on you guys because that would be that one's going to be cool. That one is going to be cool, but it has been taking a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of editing because uh, to be brutally honest with you guys, I shot like probably three hours from the footage while I was there. So um, that definitely is going to be a little bit weird. Uh, Foster's Fish says, oh, it's confirmed. You're coming to the Nasty Natty, right? Um which, uh, what is that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. I'm confused. But we will be in Minnesota that, uh, just after Labor Day. So it'd be like the kids going to school and then we're going to Minnesota for that first week. So all the kids are getting shuffled off to their, their schooling. Um, then, uh, that's when we're going to be in Minnesota, which... Is going to be pretty exciting. I think, um, you know, Minnesota is just definitely a slice of Americana. It's just right down the middle, and uh, I'm definitely excited for that. Uh, aquatic Experience will be whenever that is. I will be at the Aquatic Experience also. That is all booked. And, yes, Aquatic Experience is the 18th through the 22nd of October. So uh, I'll be at that. And then if you guys know anything about anything that's going on on this channel, uh, we will be, I will be not traveling <laughs> after November. I will not be traveling uh, for a little while because we do have a baby coming on the way, which today we marked the downhill. We've marked the downhill portion of Vicky Toria's pregnancy. We are headed down the hill towards a baby. And I don't know how to say this with the, so let me rephrase it in my head before I say it out loud. Before the baby arrives. How about that? Yes. Uh, we are headed on the downslope, and which is cool. Exciting. A little bit 
scary. It's a little bit scary. I keep thinking about what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to have an extra serious obligation on my plate taking care of our baby. I'm just going to figure it out. I'm just going to figure it out. I'm not sure. And one of the reasons I'm going to be able to figure out is because of stuff like this. Um, Luke and Sasha Locken went on to Amazon and they, we, as you guys know, you have to do a baby registry. I don't know. I feel like a, I feel like a child myself sometimes when I talk about this stuff. Um, I'm super excited about it, but I do definitely feel like a child sometimes when, um, when I don't, uh, I don't know the ins and outs of things, but we did a baby registry. It is online. Some, and some awesome fish fam. Uh, some of the awesome parts of the fish fam went in and uh, grabbed some things off there, um, which Luke and Sasha with the baby socks. Thank you very much. That is super awesome. That is kind of the thing that I that realistically, if I was going to get something off somebody's baby registry, this is what I would do. I'd be like, yeah, here's like 10 pairs of baby socks. Totally cool. Boom. Awesome. But OK, Josh Peters. Uh, otherwise known as Yeti and Nikes, right? Um, went totally over the top and got us a diaper bag and binkies. Um, and it's people I've never even gotten a, ch I got, gotten a chance to meet. So that's why I was trying to let you guys know my travel schedule. So maybe we have a chance to say hi and I can say thank you in person. Uh, yesterday I got an opportunity to uh, meet um, well, I can't remember his name, the name of his channel now. Um, he used to be, oh, now I feel like an idiot. Hold on. Uh, before I say it, I don't want to get it wrong. What's the, what's the name of his channel now? It's Dean's channel, but I can't remember the name of it. It used to be Hey F U 2 I can't remember the name of his new channel, but, uh, I did get to go up to the co-op and meet Dean in person say hi. Uh, shake his hand, hang out for a while. Uh, Master Beta, that's what it is. There it is. <laughs> Got a great uh, sense of humor with his names for sure. Um, and it's just one of those things to be able to come out and meet the people and stuff like that. that that's the that's the thing. Like if I go to these, um, if if I go to these, you know, we we go to these trade conventions. Like there, none of the fans are there. Like, well, I mean, there are some there. There are a few that, that make they make their way in, but it's not like for the fans. It's not like what it's all about. Uh, but that's one of the big reasons I love going to the aquatic experience uh, and just having a chance to say hi to all the awesome people and, and, and have a great time. Um, but that was just like a, a, just kind of a segue there to explain, like, I'm all about doing that. It's super exciting and... Um, I look forward to it. I look forward to meeting more people. I look forward to meeting more people. Thank you guys for, thank you guys for chipping in and helping out with the baby stuff. Um, now I'm not on the hook for socks or a diaper bag, or binkies, which <laughs> is totally helpful at this point. Because I don't even really know. I mean, I know what I'm shopping for when it comes to most things. I guess uh, I know how to clean up after babies, and I know like how to do the diapers and stuff, but. Um, I don't know what a good binky is or not. I don't know what a good diaper bag is or not. You know what I mean? So I appreciate you guys, uh, helping out. It's super awesome. Uh, Josh Peters is in the chat and, uh, I did see Yeti in the chat. Yeti and Nike's in the chat also. Yes. I probably got those confused, but either way, I saw them both in the chat. Give them a shout. Let them know thanks, and uh, mad props, you guys. I, I, I appreciate it big time. All right. Well, either way, let's uh, get done with uh, whatever that warm-up to the show was. Let's see if we can't hammer out some of these questions here and say hi to a few people. I see Savannah the Aqualama. I see Bob Kaler. Hey, Bob Kaler, the other Bob Fish Hobby is in the, is in the chat. Uh, let me try to read a little bit here. Uh, Kevin Keener. What's up, my man? Good to see you, Kevin. Uh, hopefully Kevin will be coming over sooner than later. I'm going to be donating my, uh, 75 gallon to him. I'm going to be breaking that down very, very soon. I'm hoping, 
I'm hoping uh, we could work something out. I keep my weekends keep getting full, so maybe we could work something out during the week. I don't, I don't even know at this point. Maybe I'll just, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But uh, I see Kevin in the chat. I see Ultimate Fish Keeping Show. Emily Fobear says, "What's up?" Uh, Alvin Alejo is here. What's up, dude? Good to see you. Uh, ba ba ba. Ed's fish. Jad Orzi, Kaudo Punk, uh, Gillett. I already said hi to you, Gillett. Be quiet. Shh. Shh. Mr. Joel G, if that's your real name. Mr. NZ New Zealander. Uh, Phil Emerson's in the chat. <laughs> I'm just giving Joel a hard time, you guys. Don't worry. I love Joel, and I hope he's here all the time. I can't wait to go to New Zealand and hang out with him. And I, what did they do there? Herd sheep? Go swimming? I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, Kyra Witt is here. Good to see Kyra Witt. Yeti in Nikes. There you are. Uh, says, any idea what would cause Mara Rasboras to die off, but not the shrimp? In the last three days, I've found uh, I've lost 10 of 19 uh, Mara Rasboras, but no shrimp. There's about five adults and 100 juveniles. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember Mara Rasbora. Um, I think Mara Rasboras are like Phoenix Rasboras. I think they might be the same as like em Emerald Rasboras. Um, I'm. You know, those really little, little rasboras, I've had similar situations before where I've had them die off. And they are an exceedingly difficult fish to really figure out what was going on with them. Uh, because the visual side of things is just not all that great. But if you do have some dead ones, you might be able to do some autopsy work which i know sounds gross and it's not the funnest thing in the world to do but uh if you do have a couple of exacto blades you can have a potential for either a smear you could get somebody to look at it under a microscope to see if you have some weird um bacterial thing going on or a weird fungus thing going on but more often than not it's normally a parasite if something like that's going on and that's assuming um and that's assuming that you have fully tested the water and you know everything in the water is going okay. Um, I would test the water, test the water, test the water, see what's happening. And then from there, I would have a, have, uh, from there, I would get a, I, I, I would consider the opportunity of maybe doing some autopsy type stuff and see if you can't go from there. Uh, if you have something weird going on with your water, then that would probably be the culprit. You know, with the um, the little phoenix rasboras that we used to have, and the um, emerald rasboras, and what was the other one? SBI rasboras. That seems right. Could be wrong, but I do get them confused at times. Um, but we had them die off a few times just randomly, and it just wasn't there. I think at one time there was like a there was a parasitic thing going on that we did figure out, uh, and then the two other times it was just like what happened. Um, we were both uh, scratching our heads trying to figure out exactly what happened, and they, and it was the same kind of thing. Like they didn't all die off, just a bunch of them did. Um, luckily, luckily I, I recall the emeralds getting down to a point where there was only like six or seven. And they lasted a long time, but then it kind of sucked because we didn't really have enough to make them a really cool thing. We ended up moving them to their own little tiny tank at one point in time, I recall. I think they were in like a one and a half gallon little shelf um, aquarium at uh, by that point in time because there just wasn't enough to really like fill out a real sized aquarium. So um, uh, HC Aqua just showed up. Asking if you missed the video segment today. No, the video segment hasn't happened yet. We're almost to that point where we rock into the uh, the video segment. I've kind of been bumping the video segment closer and closer to the beginning of the show, and eventually, at some point in time, I'm just going to start out in the um, 
in the video segment right at the beginning and then go into the like saying hi <laughs> i think that's a next level troll i think i think that would be next level uh throwing people just way off their game like like just start the show like i'm in the middle of the show and just be like yeah so you know i was having a thing with this uh plant and it was blah 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 blah, blah. and then do the loading screen like after the videos <laughs> I think, I think I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe I just think I'm too much of a big deal. That's probably it. And why do I think I'm too much of a big deal? Because check it out, you guys. I managed to get my hands on a can of Mr. Brown's. Has nothing to do with me. Has everything to do with Corey. He had to go to a store yesterday to do something. I, I don't know what he was doing, but he had to go to a store, and um, they happened to have Mr. Browns there. So he actually got some Mr. Browns for me and Jimmy. So uh, tip of the hat, the proverbial hat that I'm not actually wearing right now. Uh, tip of the hat to the guy who hooked up some Mr. Browns. Preach. It's Dees, bro. Dees, you know. Get some super chats. Let's don't. Let's not let these super chats pile up. You know what happened last time? Somebody came on and got all super pissed that I was answering super chats, and they didn't have any money. And then they got banned after they got a bad attitude. Oh, what is the internet coming to these days? You you guys, I don't even know. I don't even know what the internet is coming to these days. Ugh. <laughs> But we got some super chats here. Let's run through them real quick so we don't get behind. The zombie drummer with a seven dollar eighty nine cent for the lurking tax slash tip jar. <coughs> I didn't realize there was a lurking tax. I thought you guys got hammered. I thought the lurkers got hammered with commercials, so that was the lurking tax, right? I think that was the deal. I think that's the deal how that works, right? I think that I think that's how it goes. I'm not sure. Uh, Gillett just popped in and said he, it enrages him he can't rewind the stream. I, I don't know why you can't rewind the stream. It's got something to do with New Zealand. You're weird, and I don't know why. But either way, it uploads as a video later, so if you did miss something, be sure to come back, watch it again, hit the like button 100 times next time you show up, and uh, it'll be okay, and you'll be less enraged, my guy. Ryan Avery with a 555 super chat says, should I use a hang on back skimmer and an aqua clear on a 40 breeder reef or just the skimmer setting up a tank soon? Can't wait for real fish talk to come back. Um, well, I would say in my personal opinion, uh, if you have a 40 breeder, right, that is set up as a reef and you don't have it plumbed for a sump or drilled or anything like that um, I would recommend to utilize the hang on back as some kind of refugium that's what I would be doing with it um, you know if you have a decent hang on back skimmer that is gonna pull most of the proteins and stuff like that out of the water column already um, that's gonna do most of the stuff that a hang on back filter ex the expectation of a hang on back filter would do the little bit of beneficial media in there isn't going to do really anything for a reef because most of the live rock is biological media it's very porous rock that is going to be housing a lot of the bacteria and everything that will help break down that stuff you just want the skimmer to get the uh, particulates out uh, but i personally would run both if you happen to have both, I wouldn't go out of your way to buy a an AquaClear hang on back. But if you have one, I would definitely convert it to uh, growing some macro algae algaes as a refugium. Uh, that would be wildly helpful. I would definitely do that and run a hang on back skimmer, and um, that will really uh, that will really work pretty well for. Uh, it, pretty much any 40 breeder out there as far as a reef goes um but um i wouldn't be using the the aqua clear as with the, the freshwater setup in it the freshwater setup in it is isn't going to do anything good for you uh you'll basically end up with a sponge that will just 
collect a bunch of stuff and cause crazy ammonia spikes and stuff like that in your water. You don't want uh, sponges in a reef, realistically. And uh, so hopefully that's good advice. Hopefully that's advice that makes sense. Hopefully I answered your question. I feel like I... I feel like I sort of answered your question, but I think if I had the equipment, I would convert the AquaClear into a refugium. Tampa Tom here with the 199 Super Chat saying, Will my dwarf crayfi, crayfi, my dwarf crayfi eat my cherry shrimp? Uh, yes, dwarf crayfish will eat anything they can get their hands on, depending on how hungry they are. And that hunger will change as the day and night goes on. So maybe he's not hungry right now. Maybe your dwarf crayfish is not hungry right now, but it will become hungry and feast. I tell you, I put a couple of dwarf crayfish in an aquarium. I'm not going to say what year this was or where I was or what I was doing, but I got some dwarf crayfish. I put them into a tank and boy, howdy, they were full grown. They was aggressive, and they was hungry. Some of them proceeded to cut down and eat all of the all of the hair grass I had in there, which was crazy. I had a mowed lawn basically, and uh, all my hair grass got eaten. Uh, I noticed quite a few guppies that got pinched right in half and eaten. Uh, as the guppies would come down to investigate. What is that weird thing crawling around down there? Yeah. And also... They ate up all the shrimp in there. So, um, yeah, they definitely are not a great idea to put in with other creatures. Because they, they will get hungrier and hungrier. Uh, just kind of... Depending on the time of day, and in my experience, they get super cranky. But I think they're awesome, and if you could just have them in a tank and let them rock and roll in there and do cool stuff, um, they might be cool with, like, a fish that stays up high. The guppies are just kind of dumb and can't really figure out that because that thing is sitting still, it's not, it, you know, they can't figure out that they, th they see a thing there and they're like, oh, it's just chilling. I'm going to go check it out. Like, see what's going on, man. It's not moving around a lot. I'm going to go wag over there and see what's happening. And then they get eaten. You know. Um, let's see here. But yeah, I, I, I think they will eat your cherry shrimp. So <laughs> they may not. I mean, you could try it. You could always remove them. You could always put them in there and see if they start going to town. Uh, but, you know, in my experience, I've just seen over time, they definitely, maybe they're not doing it right off, right out the gate, but it uh, it will happen over time. Savannah, the Aqualama says, my crayfish not only ate everything and chopped up my plants, they also sliced my, my decorative marbles into pieces. Every one of them. I could see how that would happen. I could see how that would happen. They're pretty aggressive. You know, they're aggressive like that. Uh, Phil Emerson says, My minnows lit off a bunch of fireworks, got really excited, then 90% of them died. It sucked. <laughs> <clears throat> well, as I've recommended many times before, um, don't light off the fireworks in your living room. It's just not a thing. You don't want to do it. Your house will burn down. And uh, there you go. Kevin Keener says he can't rewind in Washington either. Um, weird. Savannah says DVR playback is a creator setting. It might be. It may or may not be. It might be a creator setting. Where is that? I don't know. There's my stream key and my buttons and... I don't know. It might be. I guess maybe that's the big deal. Like, people don't... People don't want to watch this because they can't rewind it, I guess. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know why you can't rewind it. I'll figure it out someday. But, you know. Uh, Oddball Aquatics, if you had to pick a smartest fish, what would it be? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, 
let me think here. Um, let me think. I gotta look this up and see if I'm thinking of the right fish. No, that's not the right fish. Uh, there it is. What? Macropodus opercularis. Opercularis. I can never say that right. Um, because the name is super easy. The paradise fish. As far as freshwater fish goes. Saltwater fish would be a totally different thing. But if we're talking about freshwater fish, I would say the smartest ones I've ever seen are paradise fish. Um, they recognize people. They know who feeds them. They know where feeds them. They know quite. They know quite a bit. Uh, in 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 my experience, they are kind of like a little puppy dog. Um, the paradise fish, I think, are probably about the smartest. Puffers, I'd probably put in there also. <clears throat> Except puffers can't breathe air. You know, paradise fish can live pretty much in any water environment. They're even more durable than betas. They are of the labyrinth gill family, so they can breathe air also. Um, I'd put puffer fish up there, but I think the smartest ones I've ever seen is uh, uh, almost all oh, paradise fish. They just, they're just all knowing. I'm going to name them stuff like lightning and sparky, you know, things like that, because they're all pretty darn smart. Well... As we move along, I gotta remind you guys. Uh, I got this rock. And I don't know about you guys. Are you excited about this rock? I feel like a weird person that gets excited about rocks. I don't know. But I'm excited for this rock. I'm excited for this rock. And the reason I bring up this rock are you guys excited for me to do a new aquarium? Because I know that you guys know that we have a brand new 120 gallon acrylic aquarium sitting in the garage. Is that today's video? No, but that will be coming very soon, mainly because I'm building the stands and stuff. So I want to make sure that you guys get to get to see the stand building um, video. Whoops. Oh, there's a little. Little rocks falling out of here. Okay, I can't keep taking the plastic off. But look at that. Look at the majesty. Revel. Revel in the beauty of this rock. Does anybody know where I got that rock? I got that rock from the Aquarium Coop. Speaking of the Aquarium Coop, you should go up there and check them out. If you've never checked them out, I would go up there and get some stuff. Because that's legit. And that's a thing. And that's the thing that everybody would like to do. Right? Cool. If you are going to go there, because you're going to order some plants and stuff, just be sure to use uh, use my affiliate link so that Corey knows I sent you. Then, if anybody else tries to say that they sent you, you could be like, no. See this? I click the affiliate link, right? And then people will know. It's at the it's at the pinned comment on like every video, so it should be pretty easy to find. But you know, uh, Phil Emerson says, "Is that rock in plastic?" Yes, it is. That's all part of the shipping. Uh, that's all part of the shipping deal with uh, the the co-op. They get them. They get the pla the the rock plastic on them so that they can ship. And uh, not be a disaster inside the box, which I think is a cool extra step that most people don't do. Um, so I definitely dig it. Uh, Kira Witt said, my pet smart guy recommended buying plants from the co-op. I was like, yeah, felt like I was part of the cool kids club for sure. <laughs> You're all like, I know Corvus, man. Shut up, pet smart guy. Pachow. And then you chopped him in the neck karate style. That's probably what I would have done. Minus the karate chop. I probably would have done a dance move. You know. Maybe. I don't know. I'm so excited for all the rocks I got right now. And the reason for that. We got a brand new 120. We got that brand new 120 in 120 gallon 
acrylic tank, and Vicky and I have decided it is going to be planet tank. And everybody out there, I know you're going to get mad that you wanted a reef and you wanted... There was a lot of people out there that wanted me to do a brackish tank. And I, I don't know if I'm at the point right now where I feel like I got to do a brackish tank. I feel like I got to do a reef tank. So, I think the perfect accommodation for what I want to do and what I want to do continuing moving forward is... The reef is going to go into that 60-gallon cube. That just seems to be the best thing that I could do at this point. I think that's going to be the best deal. I think that's going to work out the best for everybody. That means I'm going to have time to set it all up, put it in a really cool tank, and just be able to run the reef really well. So uh, the reef's going to go into that 60-gallon cube. The only downside, I'm going to have to... Um, I'm going to have to adopt out my um, my blue tang and a couple other fish. But I'll be able to keep the firefish, the gobies, um, and the blennies. So I think that's just really what I'm going to focus on with that tank is firefish, gobies, and blennies. And just stick with that because they are my favorite by far uh, saltwater fish. And just rock that out and and uh, go with the fish that I really want. Go with the corals that I really want, which are all the easy corals. So I don't really need to have to be super dedicated to try and figure out, um, you know. So I don't have. So I personally don't have to be super dedicated to taking care of my corals. It's definitely going to be um, a pretty easy setup is what I'm going to be going for. I'm going to be going for all euphelias and stuff, which is easy for me to test for, easy for me to dose and keep them going well. And I think the 60 gallon is, as Barbara says, the shape of the 60 cube lends itself nicely to a reef tank. Yes, I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's going to lend itself really well to what I want to do with the reef um, and being able to build it out. Also, I think it's going to work out pretty darn well. So I'm excited for it. I'm excited to get going on that uh, project, but that also means going to have to break down some stuff. <laughs> going to have to break down some stuff, which means I got to break down the, um, I'm going to have to break down the two, uh, the 75 and the 60 and get them ready and get them prepped and get them going. Um, but as I mentioned before, very excited to get going on that and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So happy days. You'll be all like, happy days are here again. Oh my God, it's happy time. Oh, is that how that song goes? Has anybody even heard that song I just said? Because that's not even a song. I don't think. I don't think that's a song, right? <laughs> uh, Ed's Fish says, in my eyes, the 60 cube is the second most perfect reef tank size. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty darn good. Um, I definitely enjoy the 30 gallon cubes, that's for sure. But the 60 gallon cube makes me happy. That's a happy shape. It's a happy size. Water volume is good. Uh, everything will fit in the sump. I'll probably have to build out a new sump, even though everything will fit in the sump space that's what i was trying to say everything will fit in the sump space but i probably have to build out uh a new sump not a big deal you guys it just means more videos so that's all good uh noob fobo says yes it's a song i've heard it <laughs> it's like that love take me down to the streets all right i'm getting way off um i'm getting way off track here uh wheezy says upgrade the firefish to a Helfrex firefish and uh yes at some point in time i will be upgrading the firefish and stuff um but i don't know when that day is because they don't i mean they're not an expensive reef fish but when you're talking about getting like 50 of them or 40 of them or even 10 of them it really adds up and it gets a little bit uh, a little bit crazy Whew. um okay <laughs> everybody's everybody's typing out that song um you know everybody's typing out that song and that's good times 
I have a good time with it, and I think you guys too. But let's go do the video, because it's video time, and uh, it should have something to do with the title of the stream. What is the title to the stream? Is it here? Is it there? Is it anywhere? How many people unsubscribed so far? Six. <laughs> We've lost six subscribers to the ether, you guys. We started a live stream and we've lost the subscribers. <laughs> but the title says how to change your aquascape in 10 minutes. Now, the reason I say that. So I started a timer on myself. I had to do some work <coughs> in a very specific spot. I started a timer on myself. I set up my camera. I set the timer up. I start timer. Timer goes beep at the end, right? Yeah. So I started a timer, and then after the fact, I sped up the video. So it'll loop around a couple of times so you guys don't get bored to death watching me go at regular speed, which I will agree bores me to death when I'm going at regular speed. Um, it definitely is better if I'm going at fast speed, right? I think it's better when it's going at fast speed. You know what I mean? Uh, Enix Sound says, after three months, I still can't grow plants. Algae, on the other hand, ooh, 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 dot, dot, dot. Yes, you got an issue. I got an issue. Everybody's got an algae. Everybody's got an issue with some algae here and there. Don't get depressed about it. Just keep moving forward, moving forward with your um just keep just keep moving forward with your maintenance schedule keep keep going double check that your lights double check testing your water make sure you're fertilizing stuff like that this is a trial and error thing this isn't something that you wake up one day and be super good at just right out the gate it takes it does take time to get better and better and better and i implore you to continue working on it because the rewards get bigger the rewards get better and even in my 240 right here you guys can see i do have a bit of <laughs> algae issues going on in here uh, and you know it's just the life it's the life i tried to do something um I tried to do something, and now it definitely has spiraled wildly out of control. Um, I basically took some Cladophora algae. I broke it up. I spread it out. As you guys know, Marimo moss balls are Cladophora algae, right? So I was going to start growing some Cladophora algae on the driftwood and stuff in here. So I'm trying an old school technique of breaking up basically a Marimo moss ball and allowing it to seed throughout the tank. Good news, it's definitely seeded throughout the tank. Bad news, it has seeded throughout the tank. <laughs> As an independent entity, it has begun to grow wildly out of hand in conjunction with the fact that I have really, really old driftwood that is breaking down in this aquarium. So, combine the high light with the cladophora and the driftwood that is breaking down. Guess what we get? We start getting cladophora all over the place. Um, and, you know, it realistically, it just is the life sometimes. It just is the life of trying an experiment, watching it fail, and that's not a big deal. But the main reason I wanted to shoot this video is because I needed to move some of these rocks and fixtures that basically need some of that cladophora cleaned off of it. And I definitely was getting kind of tired of how this little front area was going. Uh, I needed to pull out a ton of that stargrass from that area. And that piece of wood that I had put in there was at the most boring angle I could have put it at after the plants had grown in. So didn't really have that much in the way of pre-planning in my mind. Uh, I basically just kind of put it where I thought it looked good. Didn't even think about in the future of what was going to happen as things were going to grow in. And it got overgrown. And it looks totally dumb. You know, uh, it looks totally dumb. 
and uh, so it was time to move. But then I realized after the fact, I basically I hit the 10 minute mark. I hit that 10 minutes of aquascaping and it looks totally different in that area. So I wanted to relate to you guys that in about 10 minutes time, I broke up a rock, I moved some wood, um, trimmed out a bunch of plants and thinned out a bunch of plants and it allowed this whole space to start to look completely different from start to finish took 10 minutes it was only 10 minutes out of my day it was 10 minutes out of my day that i enjoyed because i was leaning into a tank i was messing around with plants and rocks and driftwood which you guys know is one of my favorite things um amongst all the other stuff i did in the fish room this is probably the most enjoyable 10 minutes that i spent um i don't know a bunch of people left for some reason and it probably has to do with the video. People don't seem to like the video today for some reason. They all left. <laughs> well, we had 100 and where were we at? We hit the high water mark today, you guys, at 115. And then, I don't know, 30 of them just left over the last three minutes. So my guess, probably somebody super popular just started a live stream or something like that. That would be my guess if I had to. Or somebody just put out a video. I'm going to guess that somebody just put out a video. But either way. Uh, if, you do like, if you do like the show, if you like the stream, everybody in there is saying to hit the like button. Because somebody, uh, Terry popped in and said, 102 watching, only 55 likes. Hmm. Hmm. What are you all doing? Tripping? All right. But either way, here we go back with the video segment again. Uh, and as I said, I just wanted to illustrate. So here's the beginning. Uh, what it looked like we have this flat nothingness going on here and oh my gosh who's got the whiteboard it's me activate make a weird looking this looks like a weird ufo that i got going here maybe we'll turn it into a, a fried egg with a hat in the middle what's this weird hat i'm dude i'm the worst at um as you guys know i do a lot of art but i'm the worst at doing it with a mouse i'm just not good at it all you youngsters out there growing up with a mouse in your hand. <laughs> Learning some good stuff. <clears throat> Steve's salty Steve's salty shrimp shrimpery and more as asking how did I go about breaking the rock? Was it a hammer? Was it a karate chop? Um, if I have really persistent rock, I do uh, utilize a rock hammer. Uh, if any of you have seen the Shawshank Redemption, uh, I have a rock hammer just like Andy Dufresne's off of the uh, Shawshank Redemption. Uh, I have a rock hammer that I can uh, rock things or break rocks with if I need to. Um, I would I recommend a hammer, a rock hammer, and a chisel if you need to get something really. Um, if you could, uh, if you need to get something really detailed where you can get into a seam of the rocks and split them apart, uh, it's most easy with things like um, granite and basalt to find a vein of like iron or something like that um, is where it's the easiest to break them. Uh, you can normally find like small fractures and things like that. But of course, I naturally used a karate chop, of course. Um, you know, I definitely... Uh, I definitely use a karate chop these days. Actually, this one I, I just dropped on the floor. I just dropped it on the concrete floor, and it broke. <laughs> I knew it was going to break because I'd already pre-sawed it with my uh, tile saw. So uh, I knew it was going to break, and it worked out pretty well. Um, let's see here. Foster's Fish says, was this the longest rescape of your life? No, I've spent... I've done rescapes that took uh, that spanned a 12-hour period, uh, especially on this 240. When it when you really get everything broken out of it and all the buckets everywhere and keeping everything in order, um, keeping everything wet, um, it uh, it can definitely take a really long time to rescape this 240. Uh, and I very rarely do I ever have like a helper around uh, that can help out, you know. So let's see here who's asking. Um, Somebody was asking, oh, 
Foster's Fish at Jose de Vila. Good plants or hardscape. Um, Monster is down a side street next to a mall, but definitely worth searching out. You can check out the fish store tours of it on YouTube. Um, where do you... Where is Monster? Where is that? I'm interested. I'm interested in where Monster is. Oh, City Field. Okay, let me see here. I can I can deduce this. Let's see where City Field is. Oh, that's the um That's the Mets. That's the Mets ballpark. Okay, that's why I figured it. I kind of knew what it was. So Monster is in New York. So you're going to have to find it in New York. And uh yeah, that would be pretty good. If you're in New York, I guess I would check that out. Uh, try not to smuggle fish on the planes too often. Don't want to lose my TSA pre-check. Uh, I think you can take live... I've seen lots of people take live fish on the planes. You just have to declare them uh, as you're going through. That, like, I have a live animal. You want to have uh, a little container for it that is a, a good, legitimate airplane travel container. Like, they have a pre-approved containers that you can take them with you. Um, you cannot check them because it will get too cold in the belly of the plane. You have to take them as your carry-on, so you probably have to check your bags. Um, but you can take them onto the plane with you. Just make sure you have the right bag and the right... Have them bagged up properly, that they're visible, that, that there are visible alive creatures inside these bags of liquid. That's why they're in the bags of liquid. Um, you just have to let them know ahead of time, basically, as you're... Well, I mean... It's not like call the airport ahead of time. You just have to declare them. Give yourself a little extra time to get checked out um, by the TSA and stuff. I don't want to lose my TSA pre-check either. Because TSA pre is awesome. I love being able to uh, hurry up in the airport and go through the short line. I recommend anybody to get it. Rob Hicks is here. What's up, my man? Long time no see. Says I'm working on getting... CO2 set up on my 40 gallon, but in Canada, I find it hard to find good regulators on Amazon. Can anyone help with ideas for me? Uh, I wish I could help. I'm never a great help for things in Canada. I wasn't allowed to go to Canada for many, many years. Although I think it's okay now. Not 100%. Not 100% sure on that, though. I really want to go up there and check out uh, some greenhouse operations that are going on up in Canada. And... I don't know. I haven't heard from uh, those guys if they really want me to come out or not. Or what I could actually film if I went up there. So it might be it might be super boring if I go up there and I can't film anything. That would be bummer. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Jose says, their plant selection is not that great. They seem to have a lot of driftwood and stuff stashed up high where they'd have to get it down. Pacific Aquarium and Plant and Lower East Side might be better. Ooh, that's getting some good New York, New York fish stores advice. I'm digging that. Uh, Steve says, are they not limited to the 3.5 ounce rule? I don't think they are necessarily, but I would double check. Um, I've personally never taken them on planes, but I know a lot of people who have. So, um, but I also don't work for the TSA. I don't work for the airport. I don't work for any of those guys. So I, I wouldn't know. I'm saying. Hop on and, and double check, but I know it's possible to be able to take them with you on planes. Um, ba -ba -da -bum. Let's check out. Uh, Derek Reynolds says, is the rock hammer worn down to a nub? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I've got about 20 more years uh, in lockup before my rock hammer gets worn down to the nub. Although I do keep it in a hollowed out Bible, like most adult men do right isn't that what you do uh, dun, 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 dun. let's see here all right i think i'm pretty well caught up but uh the star grass in here is growing wildly out of control uh those of you that were around a couple weeks ago know that i <laughs> Trimmed it back, I trimmed it back, I trimmed it back, and I'm almost at the point now where I have to tear it out and replant it, which sucks. Um, mainly because I got to a point where I allowed it to kind of overgrow itself. Bummer, but I do have some deep thoughts about what I want to do with the 240 at this point. Uh, I am considering making some changes. As I mentioned, the um, 
the driftwood is getting super old in here. It is getting to the point where it's, you know, it's probably three, four, five years old, something like that. I, you know, I wouldn't know exactly. Gosh, maybe it's even, maybe some of it's even older than that, having been underwater. It's starting to get to a flimsy point. It's starting to get really dark, and it's definitely starting to release more uh, uh, nutrients at this point. Which just gives me a point that it's not a big deal. I probably should take it out. Uh, I could probably just, I'll, what I'll probably do, okay, <clears throat> what I'll probably do is pressure wash it off. Um, and cut it down and use it in a black water tank at some point in time. Uh, it's not garbage at all or anything like that. It'll still definitely be usable for an aquarium, but uh, I'm going to definitely want it to be in like a black water tank or something like that. That's, uh, that's what I am most likely going to do with all this old driftwood. Uh, I might just pressure wash it, that kind of stuff, and store it for a while, but it never will come back to its early age, you know what I mean? It's like, it's it's not ever going to get to a point where it's going to uh, be brand new again or anything like that. And I have so much of this Mopani wood that uh, that's going to do most of the, the woodwork that I need done in here. So I'm thinking uh, I just got some thoughts in my head about what I want to do with the 240, and, and I think we'll get there at some point in time. Stephen Cockins asking, how long does it normally take to get plants to outcompete algae? I'm using Seachem root tabs and flourish as well as having a fluval plant uh, 3.0. Um, generally, it shouldn't take that long, realistically, but... It also depends on the age and how you're running your aquarium. It depends on how big of water changes, things like that you're doing, how long your light cycle is. Um, balancing ferts and all that kind of stuff does take a little bit of time and a little bit of finesse. There's no magical number that you'd be able to do, uh, that you'd be able to just come up with. There is no just come up with it uh, type deal, you know. Uh, but it does take a little while. And the biggest thing I always, the first step I always recommend to people is if you're getting a ton of algae growth, I would look into um, what you're trying to get out of your light. Uh, if you have your light on too long, maybe you have it on too short, maybe you have it on at a strange time, maybe your CO2 is not coming on at the right time. Um, maybe the, the root tabs oftentimes can kind of cause some imbalances with water, but uh, always stress, 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 do some testing and find out exactly what's going on. So um, that, that would be the first thing that I would go to. Then I would also write down what your maintenance schedule is and see if you're actually following it or not. Because I have noticed that personally in the past, if I don't write down my maintenance schedule, I'll be like, yeah, I did a water change last week. Wait, did I? Oh, no, I didn't. You know, like that has happened oftentimes where I'm just like, yeah, I did one last. Wait a minute. No, I didn't do one last week. Why am I? I'm way far behind. Uh, Foster's Fish says, you mentioned building an RO unit in the last RFT. What are the basic components? Carbon, micron, and membrane. Uh, no, uh, carbon, micron, and deionization. That is, uh, th that's the three stages I use. I don't use the membrane. The membrane I don't need here. Um, but that's also a caveat that I have to remind people that um, if... You are going to be building your own little RO unit. I use the deionization, which does m almost all of what the membrane normally does. Um, it just costs more. It's more expensive than the membrane, but I have low TDS here. So I don't, I'm not that worried about it. And I want my DI, I want my roadie water. I want my RO water fast. That is savings of time is worth offsetting not using the membrane also i don't waste any water i don't have any waste water from the way that my unit works so it's three filters the same ones that i built the um co2 surges reactor out of if you guys saw that video three of those in line first one is micron second one is charcoal basically uh carbon you know carbon filtration so micron carbon deionization is the last chamber um you know i buy the di canisters that go in to the filters i get three of them for 48 bucks and those last me a surprisingly long time 
Um, Jarazon. Uh, Where did I go? I've got it in here. It's somewhere. Where did it go? There they are. Uh, so I get these. I get three of these, and they basically last me about a year. Because the last time I ordered them was July of last year. Um, and I think each one... Hold on. Let me get you guys the link. Copy. Paste. Bazowie. All right. There's the link in uh, on Amazon there. Uh, that you can go look at. These are the actual ones that I get. I bought these ones last year. Um, I think they filter something like each one does like 1,200 gallons or something like that at the rate that I'm at. Um, because my TDS out of the tap here is somewhere between 30 and 100. Uh, sometimes as low as 20. Right. Uh, sometimes as low as 20, but, uh, you know, my TDS here isn't super high. We don't have the liquid rock that a lot of people out there do. Um, our, our water here is pretty clean right out of the tap. Um, so these actually do last quite a while in comparison to a lot of people out there. Um, if you do have really high TDS, I just recommend getting a RODI unit that is um, all in one and deal with the um deal with the wastewater even though it is um it, even though it does suck uh you do, do have to find something to do with the wastewater that the uh that the roadie unit will kick off um we don't want the aquatic life one we don't want the aqua factor let me find um the ro unit that i recommend it's in it's in here somewhere just gonna take a minute for me to find it uh, where did it go? Why is this taking a... This is taking too long, you guys. Ah, here it is. Okay. This is the one that I... Wait, what? This is only a two-stage. Man, what is the deal? <sighs> sometimes sometimes this, this stresses me out when I'm trying to find you guys the thing... The, re the thing I recommend. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So um, this one right here is the one that I have used on numerous occasions. You don't have to buy this one. But this is the one that I've used a bunch of times. It works really well. It's 100 gallons per day. So it being 100 gallons per day, that's oftentimes it's super confusing to people. It's 100 gallons per eight hours okay <laughs> um heads up when they say x amount of gallons per day that's how much it's going to filter in an eight hour period they're considering they consider the day to be an eight hour work day uh, so that's how they're rated can be a little bit confusing and could definitely end up with some serious flooding um i've al almost always um I've almost always uh, set a timer on mine, and that could be an extra 100-something gallons, or let's see, 200 gallons of water on the ground if you set it up for like 24 hours because you thought it was a whole day. <laughs> so always set your timer for eight hours. That's just going to be the best way. Uh, Ed's Fish says, uh, mine is 120 TDS with 0.25 fox a quarter phosphate well that's not bad at all i would actually probably be pretty zazzed with that water that would save me it would probably save me some time uh that would definitely save me some time ed's fish says what a rip off i didn't know that didn't know what uh oh what i don't know uh, Steve's is 215 out of the tap last time he checked. Dan Squires, 310 there. Um, not too crazy. I wouldn't... Um, so here's the big thing. Like, if you have a certain water coming out of your tap, um, I would basically just adapt to it. I, I, I would adapt my systems to it. Um, I would take into consideration that, like, what I wanted to keep 
what's in that what's in that what's in line with that what's in line with what you want to keep that wants to live in that water um and you'll have a lot more success and i think ultimately be a lot happier down the road um there is uh some stuff to take into consideration if um if you are going to be filtering water and stuff i would try to keep it to a bare minimum um with an rodi unit always remember to back flush it which means you have to run it um you're gonna have to run it backwards <laughs> you're essentially gonna have to run it backwards um through the reverse osmosis portion to keep it clean so keep doing that keep doing that keep doing that and um that's really gonna be the big the big deal that you're gonna have to pay attention to is swapping it back and forth uh changing out the filters when things go wrong uh almost always testing to make sure that the ro water actually is ro water uh there's nothing more depressing than adding in fish that you th or water that you think is 100 percent clean and it's not rob hicks aquariums with the five dollar canadian super chat saying just because i haven't in a long long time well thank you very much uh, I see people giving a shout to Aquarium Coop. Oh, there's the Aquarium Co-op. Says traffic is bonkers today. Yeah, I've been getting a, a bunch of traffic updates on my phone. It has been traffic has been nuts the last the last little while. Traffic has been crazy. I think it has to do with this crazy heat wave. I think people are losing their minds. I think people are 100% losing their minds, and it's going wild. But as um as we dwindle down to 88 people live today watching i don't understand why we have so few people other than it's summertime um uh, but i don't know it is summertime so that probably is the biggest deal it uh summertime means that all the americans and stuff are uh out running around in this beautiful weather crashing their cars apparently so you know that's the thing uh, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Caleb Overhauls. If you guys don't know who Caleb Overhauls is, that's our number one guy. That's our number one fan. And he's been going through, he's seven years old, he's been going through battling leukemia for the last two years. Uh, back in the hospital today with a uh, flare up of the pneumonia. So if you guys could give your well wishings to the Caleb let the caleb or let the overalls family know that we're uh thinking about them and that uh i want everybody to go into your into your chat bar and i want you to hit caps lock and put surprises in there capitalize for caleb and don't hit enter yet because you probably should put an exclamation mark on it though so it should be fully capitalized put that into your chat bar and it should have an exclamation mark in it and then we're going to count down a moment of silence and then we're all going to hit surprises at the same time for caleb you can't put it in yet we all got to do it at the same time it's all part of the fun. Uh, but yes, Caleb's our number one fan. And uh, we just, I want to do something special for the guy. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he's watching. And we're going to count down for a second. I was going to go, go like three. How do we go from three to two? We got two. And then would you go to two to the one? <laughs> you thought that was my middle finger. It's not. One. Surprises! We'll throw that out for the Caleb. So everybody knows that we love Caleb and we hope that he's feeling better. Uh, maybe at least we can bring a smile to his face out there in the hospital and let them know that we love them and we hope that they're doing better and then we hope that this continues to go forward uh the fish fam has been wildly generous to the oh the the overhauls family and caleb helping out 
financially and whatnot, I would encourage people to continue to do that. I would defer anything for me because, uh, you know, I'm fine. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll get hired for some jobs and go do some jobs if I got to do them. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, but to help the Overholz family out is amazing, and I definitely appreciate everything that has happened. Uh, and I hope that we can con- continue to help them out and let the Overholz, let Caleb know, let Candy know, let the Overholz know. I forget her husband's name because I'm not that smart. But um, uh, And we definitely had some people kicking in today, which is awesome. And um, if you guys... If that's something that you want to um, uh, help out with, we very much appreciate it, 100%. If it's something that you can't do, you can always share it out. That's a free That's a free way of doing it. That's a free way of helping out and sharing, uh, just sharing it out. Throw it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you want to do. Uh, maybe you still have MySpace, and you're on MySpace, and you feel like you and that one other person on MySpace with you wants you want to share it with them and let them know like what's the deal right you could be like well here's the deal bro you're the other one on myspace with me i might as well let you know about some stuff and uh i did mention earlier to uh the overhauls family that i have been through that viral pneumonia that he has going on right now um it is uh it is brutal it is not fun you're in a lot of pain. Um, you're in a lot of pain, and uh, but it will get better. Um, it uh, it it sucks, uh, but it will get better. I'm just gonna keep moving forward and doing what we gotta do. Sometimes you gotta grit your teeth. Sometimes you just gotta grit your teeth and be a tough guy, and just you gotta tough it out. Um, but you don't have to be an impregnable piece of stone. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to be the mountain, but sometimes you just got to be tough and suck it up and get through the pain, and um, it will get better. And uh, we're just all, we're all pushing for you. We're all, I guess we're all praying for you, man. And we love you, and we hope to see you soon. And I would love to be able to come out and see you pretty soon, because we're going to be in Idaho, man. It's pretty close to Montana. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out and see what we can do. Um, but lots of love to everybody out there. Seems like, feels like we're slowing down. Feels like we're slowing down and just quieting down and, and, and getting kind of to the, um, kind of to getting, getting close to the end of the show. I don't know that I have, um, is there a surplus of questions here? We do have a surplus of questions on the Patreon for the Friday show, which I have to admit, I am super excited to answer all those questions on the Patreon. They are awesome, and uh, I'm looking forward to engaging with them and um, and uh, being able to answer all your guys' questions. So we're going to be getting to that on Friday. And yeah, Steve Horton just showed up, says, got to watch this all later when I get home. I know everybody out there is just having a wild Wednesday. They're out in the streets. They're not watching YouTube. They're not doing the YouTube stuff or anything today. So, uh, But it's happy to have you lovely 91 people here. Let's see if we got any questions after our slew of surprises. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, it's Nature Man says, garbage water here in Chemical Valley. <laughs> Dan Squire says, it's better because the AC is, in, is better in the car. Well, that's a good point. I bet a lot of people are sitting in their cars with the, <laughs> with the AC on full blast. I did notice that my when I was filling up my gas, I noticed that I burned through a lot more gas as I've had the AC on. Pfft, sucks. Uh, Dan Squire says, I'm still unsure of using the dehumidifier water. The TDS is like 15, but I won't, I don't want to harm my fish. Uh, dehumidifier water is condensation. So, uh, it has a low TDS because it is evaporated air or it's evaporated water that's in the air and gets, uh, pushed back down. Uh, so don't worry about it. The TDS is low cause it's, that's, it's basically distilled water is what you got there. So, um, nothing bad for that. Bentley Pascal says, Joel, for trimming stargrass, you mentioned you let it get too tall. Perhaps a quick second on what height you're shooting for to keep it optimal. Um, you know, optimal height on that, it's uh, it's one of those plants that starts to starve out its roots. Um, and it will essentially start to layer and stack on top of itself. Um, so you do want to keep it at the, you know, three inch tall 
um, is, is a reasonable height to keep it at if you can maintain it. Um, that would be... What the... That would be the way to go. Uh, three inches is probably about max. Once you get up to about six inches and stuff like that, that's when it starts to build on itself. And then if you cut way down here, you're actually just removing all of the plants because now the root is actually built up here. So it starts to make like an apartment complex for the for the shrimps under there. That's why I was letting it get taller um, is because the shrimps all live underneath there, basically. So there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shrimp underneath there. So, um, yeah, it's good, but you definitely don't want to let it get too tall. It gets too leggy and it kills out its uh, stuff. Uh, Marty Logan says 55 long reef with hang on back skimmer or forget it and do, fr do fresh with two kessels. Um, if you have two freshwater kessels, I would just go with doing a freshwater. Uh, if you have reef kessels, I would go reef. That's going to be the biggest cost expenditure to change either of the, um, uh, of the setups. You know, the Kessel lights aren't cheap. If you've got those, I would run in the direction that those lights are. Um, so if you have the reef lights, go with it. If you have the freshwater lights, I would go with it. Uh, I much appreciate the Kessel lights, but they are an insane amount of money, really, when you get down to it. Uh, they are just Lamborghini, Maserati, Veyron, whatever the, the unimaginably expensive car out there. That's basically what the equivalent of a car they are. So uh, as Marty says, you have the Reef Kessels. Okay. <coughs> I would just go with the Reef and do a hang on back skimmer personally because... <clears throat> You know, you could turn around and, like, sell the Kessels or whatever and then convert into fresh water. Um, but you're not going to get a great return on them compared to their to, compared to the cost. I think it's normally you only get, like, about a third back <coughs> on the used market. So if they're 300 bucks, you get 100 bucks. It gives you kind of an idea. Uh, you can argue with people and maybe get 50% of their value, but it turns into a really lengthy process. Rob Hicks says, what would be your advice to someone who is looking at starting CO2 for the first time as equipment goes? Um, electric solenoid on a regulator with a needle valve onto a Craigslist CO2 tank. Take the CO2 tank down and trade it out and put it in. Uh, check out one of my old videos for a, re a reactor. I would highly recommend a reactor for most people. It gives you full, <coughs> gets the CO2 fully dissolved into the water column, which is where you want it to be. You don't want bubbles floating around all over the place and doing all that nonsense. Um, yes, at one point in time, eight, ten years ago, it was a crazy novel thing to look at a YouTube video of somebody's CO2 coming out of the little diffuser. I get it. I still even like those myself. Uh, but they will drive you nuts if you're not somebody who's posting uh, fancy diffuser, glass diffuser videos onto YouTube. Like, maybe that's the thing you do, you know, and that's why you want to do it. But as a, as a person who's just around the tank all the time, it drives me nuts. And I don't, I see better growth out of ut utilizing a reactor. Um, as compared to the dif to diffusers. Oddball Aquatics says, you and Corey should do one of those lip sync challenge videos and have it uh, and have it direct people to go to Caleb's GoFundMe page and it will go viral be because y'all be crazy. Um, yeah, I've been trying to do some videos along that, but Jimmy doesn't want to do them. I blame Jimmy. I blame Jimmy. It's Jimmy's fault because he said he didn't want to do them. He was embarrassed. He was embarrassed and he was sad. And then, I, I don't know. No, we're, we're getting to doing more stuff like that. <laughs> we're definitely getting there. Um, Dan Squire says, less chance of harming your filter too. That is a good point. Um, you know, if you're direct feeding your CO2 into your filter, that is the only time I ever really saw problems. I never really saw problems with... Uh, the bacterial colony and stuff like that if things are just in the water column so the basic diffusers the glass ones anything like that I didn't see any kind of problems with a little bit of co2 getting in there but if you take the co2 and jam it into the intake of your filter that's just a lot of co2 that is just running right at the uh, bacterial colony that's in there and they just have an issue with it uh, you know it's just one of those things that uh, 
it just doesn't work out that well for the bacterial colony, which will ultimately cause your cycle to get messed up and then you'll um, end up having problems, you know, which is not good. But the King Lee song, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, uh, I, I wasn't throwing Jimmy under the bus. I was just throwing him in front of the bus. It's completely different, um, you know. <laughs> That's my boy Jim. We're gonna go rafting. Uh, Neil with the five dollar super chat says, "Better late than never." We'll watch the replay as soon as it's out. Here, it's too crazy Wednesday. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Here is too crazy Wednesday. Oh, okay. I was thinking here is too crazy Wednesday. It's too crazy Wednesday. I don't. I don't know either way. Thank you, Neil. Um, I, I probably got it wrong and then I got it right and then I got it wrong and then I got it right again and then I got it wrong did I fall asleep during the live stream oh weird I am super boring today uh, Rob Hicks says I'm thinking of running uh, it through a canister filter is that a good idea as a reactor or at least better um, <clears throat> you can run it through a canister filter just remember you're not using the canister filter as um, a filter so don't Put a bunch of so don't rely on it to be your biological filter with all that co2 going going right in there um you can use a canister filter as a reactor that is awesome uh i've done that in the past i just took all the body parts out of it and basically hooked the co2 into it and was like oh this works pretty darn good um so i've definitely been uh down that road before Dan Squire says, Friday is Patreon day, guys. Get your questions featured in the show. That is right. The Patreon questions get featured in the show from the patronizers. Uh, I answer them during the live show on Fridays, uh, which is, I, I feel like it's pretty awesome, honestly. I really like being able to do that once a week, uh, to be able to answer them long format, not have to try to type out a bunch of stuff and even if i get something wrong i get the immediate feedback from you guys which is awesome i love being able to get here and get and hear feedback from you guys um uh, if i don't get that i feel like i'm just talking into a void which you know it's weird it's just weird Jad Orzi says, I'm cleaning at home. Uh, all I'm watching is YouTube. All right. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, get the whole fish fam to submit clips uh, of parts of a song. Um, yeah, if coordinating... If, if coordinating YouTubers was easy, I would say, yeah, let's do that. But kind of a disaster to try and uh, wrangle up YouTubers. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, Ziggy Stardust is here. Unbelievable. Ziggy Stardust from the grave. Coming at us. Uh, asking, but can you tap dance? Um, minimally, yeah. I'm more of a swing dance guy myself. Classical. Classically trained uh, swing dance. Uh, amongst a couple other dances that I may or may not admit to knowing how to do. But um, yeah, I'd like to go swing dancing and stuff like that. I'm not I'm not the greatest tap dancer. I'm not bad. I'm not the worst. But that's a long list. That's a long that's, if if to get all the way to the bottom of that list would be somebody who like doesn't even try. You know what I mean? So it's easy to stay off the bottom for me cuz I can, I'll give it a shot. Why not? Uh, Nick's fish room has such a hard time asking an, an intelligent question. <laughs> hey, any questions, a good question. Just throw it out there. Uh, as long as it's not inflammatory or talking poorly about somebody else, then we're all doing pretty good. Just, just if you have a question, then it's all good. Uh, but I feel like everybody's running out of steam. I'm running out of steam myself. And uh, it being Wednesday, I do have to go run an errand. And traffic is being full-on disaster so uh honestly i have to run to the bank and get there before they close and i don't want to miss them because disaster will ensue i need to go drop a deposit on something that i mean realistically you guys might be upset that we end the show a couple minutes early but it's a deposit so that we could do more fish tank stuff in the future so 
Ah, it's a pretty good deal. You know, I think it's a pretty good deal for everybody, even though I got to quit. It just basically means I'll be able to have a, another pro a big time project for you guys, which will be good. Uh, Gareth Doyle. The quick question here right at the end. Hey, Jola. I've got what I think is cyanobacteria, veteran fish keeper, planted aquarium noob. Any advice? Um, yeah, cyanobacteria almost always is a result of something coming in from the water. When you're doing water changes, that almost always is the culprit. Uh, so test your tap water, find out what's going on, uh, and double check what's in there. Uh, find out what's in your tap water because that, that 99 times... Okay, 99 times out of 100 is a ridiculous statistic to say. 60 times out of 100, maybe 60%, let's just say that. Uh, it's often something from the water change source. Uh, could be phosphates, could be a, a number of things. I don't want to necessarily say it, but uh, check your water from your tap. Let's... Um, we'll see what it is. We'll see what's, what the, the tap water is, Gareth. And hopefully we'll see you on Friday when you can get back to us and let us know what's going on. Or, Gareth, once this uploads as a video, get those water test numbers and throw them down there in the comments. And hopefully we can address them on Friday. Oh, you throw a sad emoji on there. There's no sad, emo sad emojis here. There's no crying in baseball. Little Jimmy Dugan for you guys, um, but Gareth, um, awesome to hear your question. Get back to me with your water tests from your tap, and well, hopefully that'll get us closer to figuring out what's going on, and we can get your tank sorted out. And hopefully, if anybody else is out there, maybe it will be uh, an awesome thing for them too. Maybe they'll hear it and they'll be like, "Oh man, maybe I got got, got that going on too, and I can help. I can fix my thing." which is awesome. That's the whole reason we're here. Grow the community, help the community, and uh, help bring everybody's experiences together. Because, you know, I don't know everything. I've been through a lot of stuff, but I certainly don't know everything. But I, I hope that someday we have the accumulative effect of having enough people in this community that we can address everything someday. That is the goal. That's the long-term goal. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Oddball Aquatics says she's crying, sir. Who's crying? Who's crying? There's no crying in baseball. Mariners are 20-something games over uh, 500, so there's no crying in Seattle these days. Uh, Kira says, right in time for dinner. Got to get these kiddos fed and bathed and hopefully into bed early so you can watch some more of my videos and hit the like button and the subscribe button and blah, 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 all that stupid pandering nonsense. All right, guys, it really does add up. Thank you very much for everybody showing up. Big thanks to all of our super chatters today. Neil, Rob Hicks, Tom from Tampa, Ryan Avery, and the Zombie Drummer. Thank you very much, you guys. I 100% Appreciate it. It goes into the tip jar. It goes into making more videos for you guys. Smash the like button, karate chop the thing, and find yourself in a place where you can listen to the sounds of Lee.